Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> to most of us, a school dance isn't the most exciting event in the world, but to Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High, the one planned for last Friday night was a most welcome diversion. The more so since I was expecting bashful Mr. Boynton to peer out of his shell long enough to invite me to go with him. Anyway, last Friday morning, Mrs. Davis, my landlady, and I were discussing the dance at breakfast. Where did the funds come from for this dance, Connie? We're raising the money by means of a wishing well in front of the school. It's an idea of Harriet Conklin's. Everybody's supposed to throw in a dime. You mean students and faculty members toss in dimes to pay for refreshments and things? That's right, Mrs. Davis. I tossed my dime into the well yesterday. And what did you wish, Connie? I wished it was only a nickel. (laughs) I had a very light lunch. (laughs) If you want to know my real wish, though, you will have to keep it confidential. I won't breathe it to a living soul. Word of honor? May I lose the top propeller on my beanie? (laughs) Well, I wouldn't want you to get arrested for indecent exposure (laughs) I wish that Mr. Boynton would pay more attention to me And less to that frog of his, McDougal Why, Connie, don't tell me you're jealous of a frog If it gets any worse, we'll both be the same color (laughs) You ought to see the way he pampers that lumpy brute He even took him to the movies last night. Said McDougal just loved the picture. (laughs) What did they see? What else? Hop along Cassidy. (laughs) I think you're exaggerating, Connie. Mr. Boynton is very fond of you. Oh, that must be Walter Denton. He's taking me to school this morning. Just a minute, Walter. Excuse me, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Walter. Come in. Wait. Let me look at your hair, Miss Brooks. What? Poised in the doorway as you are, the sun seems to strike sparks from your already molten tresses. Well, don't stand there. Stamp me out. (laughs) Please come in before the flies do. I've just got to run a comb through my blazing tresses, and we're off, Walter. Would you care for a glass of milk? I just had breakfast an hour ago, but I could always have a glass of milk and an egg sandwich. Oh, I forgot. You have breakfast ahead of your tapeworm. (laughs) Oh, hello, Walter. Can I fix something for you? Oh, just anything you have in the house will be fine, Mrs. Davis. He means just everything you have in the house will be fine. (laughs) Give him a quick egg sandwich and some milk. Very well. I'll be back in a jiffy, Walter. Okay, Mrs. D. Miss Brooks, don't you think it was a wonderful idea of Harriet's to start the wishing well dance? I'll let you know after the dance. How's the well coming, by the way? Raising expenses? The dimes are flocking in. I was in charge of it for a while yesterday. Some of the wishes were a scream, Miss Brooks, especially the ones that the faculty wished about Mr. Conklin. Our beloved principal? I never thought he was so popular with his staff. One after another, they all wish that he would get everything that's coming to him. (laughs) Amen. Now, if you'll excuse me, Walter, I'm going to get my hat and purse. Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. Take your time. We're early. Here you are, Walter. Oh, just one egg sandwich, huh? Well, that'll be all right. Oh, Mrs. Davis, if you'll just sit real close to me here, I've got a big favor to ask. A favor? Shh, shh, shh. This is extremely confidential. I won't breathe a word of it. Word of honor? May I lose my beanie in the downdraft. <laughs> What's the favor? Well, the other day at the wishing well, right after I wheedled a dime out of Mr. Boynton, Harriet wheedled his wish out of him. What did he wish for, Walter? He wished for a lock of Miss Brooks' hair. Oh, isn't that romantic? But why doesn't he just ask her for it? Because he's too bashful. He says that's much too personal. But even though Harriet and I promised on our honor not to mention it to Miss Brooks, we've decided that our first step is to get him what he wants. When Miss Brooks finds out he's got it, and we'll see she does find out, then we'll take our next step, okay? Okay. But what's our first step again? Oh, please, there's no time for details. Me, Harriet, and my pal Stretch all have scissors. But just in case we don't get the opportunity, we want you to take a whack at it, too. Now, all you have to do is get her to focus her attention on something else and then snip off a hunk from the back. 
Say you'll try, Mrs. Davis, please. But when, Walter? Well, right now's a good time. Why, she's currying herself. <laughs> well... Oh, go ahead, Mrs. Davis. Here's the scissors. Just don't let her catch you, whatever you do. All right, Walter. If it's to further her romance, I guess it's worth a try. Oh, Connie. Yes, Mrs. Davis? Anything I can do to help? No, thank you. Just putting my hat on. Oh, uh, oh, uh, just a minute, Connie. Turn around a second. Just as I thought. What? There's a bug on the back of your dress. A bug? Where? Get him off. It's just a ladybug, Connie. Lady or gentleman, get him off. <laughs> All right. Now hold still. There. She's gone. Thanks. Mrs. Davis, are you sure that was just a ladybug? Positive, dear. Why do you ask? Because just before you flipped it off, I could swear she snapped at me. <laughs> well, here we are, Miss Brooks, ten minutes ahead of time. Thanks, Walter. I'm glad we're a little early. Gives me a chance to expose myself to Mr. Boynton's incipient invitation to the dance. Incipient? He's been threatening to ask me, I like to think. Oh, he'll ask you, all right. He's intensely interested in you, Miss Brooks. I can tell by the way he looks at you. Oh, you can. Well, have you ever seen him look at McDougal? <laughs> oh, sure, but believe me, they're two different looks. I know. One is up and one is down. <laughs> well, I'd better be getting out now. Oh, just a minute, Miss Brooks. Uh, there's something on your collar. On my collar? Is it a ladybug? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Here, let me brush it off for you. Uh, turn around. She must have come with a suit. <laughs> Go ahead, Walter. <laughs> There's one thing I'm sorry for. It's the ladybug with a cold. Well, no. No, that was me, Miss Brooks. No, I had to cover up the... Well, that is, I should have covered up warmer in bed last night. Well, I'll find a place to park and see you in school. All right, Walter. Happy parking. Thanks, Miss Brooks. And a happy Mr. Boynton to you. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Boynton. May I come in? Oh, oh, Miss Brooks, of course. Good morning. I was just straightening out McDougal's cage. Naturally. It's Miss Brooks, Mac. Say hello. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Mac. <laughs> hey, he sounds a little dejected, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he hasn't been sleeping well at all. Just tosses and turns all night long. So do I. <laughs> uh, but you don't bruise your sides against wire mesh when you toss around. Uh, if he doesn't improve today, I'm afraid I won't be able to ask you to go to the student faculty dance tonight, Miss Brooks. Were you going to, Mr. Boynton? Mm. You get your own date. <laughs> uh, were you, Mr. Boynton? Well, yes, I was, but Mac here... I'm getting a little tired of Mac here, Mr. Boynton. Every time we have a date, something happens to Mac. Last Monday, I had to eat lunch alone because he had laryngitis and you wanted to massage his throat. Well, it did him a world of good, didn't it, Mac? <laughs> You're another Nelson Eddy, Mac. Now shut up. And Wednesday afternoon, when we were supposed to go for a walk in the park, you called to cancel that date. Well, I had to. Mac had a headache. Oh, great. A frog with a headache. I can't say I like your attitude, Miss Brooks. If you knew the slightest bit about cellular structure, you'd be aware of the fact that amphibians and humans are equally susceptible to cranial pain. Why, post-orbital pressure on the squamosal at the base of a frog's skull can be most distressing. Now, ain't that a shame? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. And if you think I'm going to a dance while McDougal's squamosal is irritated, you're mistaken. <laughs> Excuse me now, I've... I've got to go to the cafeteria. I'm heating a little lettuce for him. Maybe I can help you. I'd make it hot for him. <laughs> no, you just keep him company till I return. Well, here we are alone, Mac. Ooh. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm not going to do anything to you. But just between you and me, Mac, Ooh. you're nothing but a big pain in the squamosal. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. For bare skin beauty, it's bath-sized palm olive with its famous beauty lather. 
Yes, vast size palm olive for loveliness all over. There's something thrillingly new in this wonderful beauty lather of vast size palm olive soap. New fragrance, new charm, new allure. See if palm olive in your daily tub or shower doesn't leave your shoulders, arms, and back, yes, all of you softer and smoother, completely lovelier all over. You're thrilled to the tender whisper of perfume it leaves on your skin. A whisper that says, come hither to romance. And this new bath-sized palm olive is so big, so thrifty, economical to use because it lasts so long and gives so much soft, lovely lather so fast. That soft, lovely lather with its alluring new fragrance is palm olive soaps alone. Palm olive's famous beauty lather. Yes, a new fragrance, new charm, new allure that can make every woman a vision of delight in the new revealing fashion that shows so much more of you. So remember, for bare skin beauty, it's bath size palm olive with its famous beauty lather. Yes, bath size palm olive for loveliness all over. Get bath size palm olive soap tomorrow. Men folk love it too. <laughs> After my first two morning classes, I had a little free time, which I was determined to employ in a really constructive manner. So I hastened to my desk and promptly did some first-rate brooding. It wasn't long, however, before my rancid reverie was interrupted. Stretch Snodgrass, Madison's star athlete, paid me a little visit. Although Stretch is splendidly equipped physically, mentally he doesn't go along with a gag. <laughs> Anyhow, while I sat with my head in my hands muttering voodoo curses against my arch-rival McDougal, Stretch slipped into my room, tiptoed up to my desk, and murmured... Hi, Miss Brooks. Can I see you for a minute? Please, Stretch. May I see you for a minute? Gosh, Miss Brooks, you don't need no permission to see me. I'm just a student. (laughs) I sometimes wonder of what. (laughs) Sit down, Stretch. What can I do for you? Well, first of all, you can stop Snag Mulligan from calling me names in class. Names? Yeah. He says stretch don't describe me good enough. He's telling everybody to call me Sano. Sano? Well, they're the cigarettes with the nicotine removed. (laughs) Well, what has that got to do with you? He says I'm the schoolboy with the brain removed. (laughs) Where did he get a hold of your x-rays? I'll tell him to cut it out. Now, what else can I do for you? Nothing, Miss Brooks, but I was thinking, maybe there's something I can do for you. For me? But, Stretch, nobody calls me names. In fact, nobody calls me at all lately. (laughs) It's about the dance, Miss Brooks, the wishing well dance. It's for faculty and students, isn't it? Yes. Well, I realize that, I mean, when it comes to romantic stuff and things like that, I'm no Mr. Boynton. Neither is he. What I'm trying to say, Miss Brooks, is... Well, have you been spoken for yet? Not exactly, Stretch. That is, I was just about to be spoken for when I was croaked at. (laughs) You mean Mr. Boynton's not taking you? Not so far. Then I would consider it a very high-type honor if you could see your way clear to escorting me to the dance. (laughs) Why, Stretch, how chivalrous. Now, please don't go getting any wrong ideas, Miss Brooks. That is... I don't think a person should be led on, do you? Definitely not. Then you'll understand when I tell you right out, I'm not in love with you, Miss Brooks. (laughs) That's what I like, a nice clean break. (laughs) No sense in dragging these things out. Oh, it isn't that I'm not terribly fond of you. It's just that, well, there's a difference in our ages. Oh, I know, Stretch. I'm old enough to be your cousin. You don't have to give me your final answer about the dance until later, Miss Brooks After all, I think Mr. Boynton ought to get another crack at you (laughs) I mean, he's really gone on you Well, it's taking him too long to get back (laughs) Now, Stretch, I'm a little tired of playing second fiddle to a frog I may not go to the dance at all Gee, I'm sorry you feel that way, Miss Brooks But I'll check back with you after school Oh, before I go, would you mind turning your head toward the window? I I think there's something on your back. On my back? It's not that ladybug again. Ladybug? Oh, yeah, that's just what it is. Hold still now, and I'll brush it off. There, all gone. Oh, there's one more thing. I had some kind of a message for you. It's been bothering me all morning. 
Oh, yeah. Mr. Conklin wants to see you in his office. Mr. Conklin? When did he give you that message, Stretch? This morning on the way into school. This morning? Well, what time did he say he wanted to see me? He said immediately. Well, it's too late for that now, so you might as well take your time. <laughs> so long, Sano. <laughs> Hi-ho, hi-ho, as off my nut I go, I wish that I... Oh! Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, I didn't see you. Thanks, Harriet, I have been losing weight lately. I was just going in to see your father. Is Madison's esteemed principal in a good mood? Wonderful, for Daddy. I just brought him the receipts from the wishing well, Miss Brooks. That's what he wants to see you about. He's got a surprise for you. A surprise? What is it? It wouldn't be a surprise anymore if I told you. But, Miss Brooks... Before you go in to see Daddy, there's somebody else wants to see you. Somebody you'd rather see than Daddy, I know. That could be anybody, Harriet. <laughs> Please be more specific. It's Mr. Boynton. He told me to tell you to drop into his lab as soon as you got the time. When did he tell you that, Harriet? Oh, hours ago. The Pony Express was faster than you, kid. <laughs> oh, just a minute, Miss Brooks. Before you go, you better turn around a minute. There's something on your collar. You, too? Well, what is it, Harriet? Oh, I'll get it off for you. It's a... it's a small piece of yarn. Now, isn't that sweet? My ladybug must be knitting me some socks. <laughs> oh, thanks very much, Mr. Jensen. These scissors will certainly come in handy. I beg your pardon, Mr. Boynton, but these scissors won't come in at all. They may be brought in, but they most certainly will not come in. <laughs> What? You said, these scissors will certainly come in handy. And I said, they may be brought in, but they most certainly will not come in. And I meant just that. <laughs> you see, ever since I've been custodian here at Madison, I've tried to get people to eliminate meaningless phrases from their conversation. I know you have, Mr. Jensen, When Jetson, you but... say the scissors will come in, you are attributing a mobility to an object which has none. Now, tell the truth, Mr. Boynton. Have you ever seen scissors coming into a place under their own power? <laughs> no, I, I haven't, Mr. Jensen. If you don't mind, I'm expecting somebody. Even if I did mind, you'd still be expecting them, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, of course you would. But if you'll pardon my curiosity, Mr. Boynton, why did you want these scissors? Well, it's rather a personal reason, Mr. Jensen, but oh, I don't mind telling you... I've wanted a lock of someone's hair for quite a while now, and I've finally mustered enough courage to try to get it. Oh, isn't that romantic? <laughs> <laughs> Who is the hair E, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, whose lock of hair do you want? Uh, it's Miss Brooks, between you and me. That would be a little crowded for her, wouldn't it? <laughs> If you do want a lock of her hair, I certainly, I certainly wish you good luck. I, I'll have to be going now. I, I hope I haven't offended you by indulging in my little hobby. Oh, not at all, Mr. Jensen. And about those scissors coming in handy, I get your point. Say, I get your point about the scissors. <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? No, not very. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Well, hello, Mr. Jensen. How are things? What things? <laughs> I don't know, everything. You've got a new baby at home, haven't you? Yes, Miss Brooks. One new one and five used ones. <laughs> Six children. Just think of it. It's hard not to. <laughs> How's the latest? Is he big? Reasonably large, yes. Have you named him yet? Yes, we've named him. What did you call him, Mr. Jensen? No, we didn't call him Mr. Jensen. That's my name. <laughs> there must be another route to the laboratory. <laughs> you have a new baby, Mr. Jensen. What is his name? His name is Lucy. <laughs> oh. Well, if you'll excuse me, Miss Brooks, I'll be running along Oh, now I've caught you, Mr. Jensen You won't actually be running along at all Oh, yes, I will Goodbye, Miss Brooks <laughs> Well, some days you just can't win 
Uh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Boynton. What did you do? Oh, now, don't you start that. <laughs> Harriet told me you wanted to see me. Oh, I do, Miss Brooks. It's about this morning. I didn't like the way we parted. Well, neither did I, Mr. Boynton, but you had to get some hot lettuce for the king of the croakers. <laughs> well, please, Miss Brooks, don't be angry. Uh, that's all over now, and Max, feel, Max feels much better. In fact, if he keeps on improving today, I'd very much like to take you to the wishing well dance tonight. You would, Mr. Boynton? Yes, indeed, and... Something else I'd like to do, too, right now. There is? Yes, there is. Would you turn your head a bit, please? Like this? Uh, no, not up toward me, away from me. <laughs> In fact, you better turn all the way around. But why, Mr. Boynton? Uh, there's something on the collar of your suit. It's probably just a loose thread. Here, I'll snip it off for you. There. Is that all, Mr. Boynton? Uh, yes, Miss Brooks, that's all. Then I guess I'll be running over to Mr. Conklin's office for some warmth and affection. Oh, just a minute, Miss Brooks. You won't actually be running oh, over. Oh, yes, I will. Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Excuse me, Mr. Conklin, but I got a message that you wanted to see me. Uh, how was it delivered? By pack mule? <laughs> Well, never mind, Miss Brooks. There's no time for apologies. I've been considering various members of the faculty for the position of executive hostess at the Wishing Well Dance tonight. Yes, Mr. Conklin? Your name was the first to pop into my mind. And as quickly as I could, I popped it out. <laughs> However, due to severe pressure from my wife and daughter, I hereby appoint you Miss Wishing Well of 1949. You think I'm deep enough? <laughs> I <I'm... laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. Conklin. Uh, this is not merely an honorary title, Miss Brooks. I've invited several members of the Board of Education to attend. And it will be your duty to see that the entire affair is run off without a hitch. Well, I'll try my best, Mr. Conklin. Will I be in charge of purchasing refreshments? You will. Harriet will turn over the funds that were collected, and I suggest that you enlist the aid of one of the male members of the faculty to help carry the bundle. I have a biology teacher in the balcony, Doctor. That is, <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Boynton will be glad to help. Yes. That's the door. <laughs> yes, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Conklin. Goodbye, Miss... Oh, uh, just a moment, Miss Brooks. Come back to my desk, please. What is it, Mr. Conklin? I'd like to take a look at the back of your head. <laughs> just as I thought. Miss Brooks, you are hereby relieved of all duties at the dance tonight. But I don't understand, Mr. Conklin. Furthermore, I forbid you even to put in an appearance. But why? I told you the Board of Education would be there, Miss Brooks. And I flatly refuse to have them see one of my teachers wearing a butch haircut. And this is what makes the platypus unique. Well, that's all for today. Class dismissed. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton, but I've got something you want. Here, it's a lock of Miss Brooks' hair. A lock of Miss Brooks' hair? How did you know I wanted that? Harriet told me, but don't worry, Mr. Boynton. Your secret hasn't gone any further than Harriet and me. And Stretch and Mrs. Davis. Don't forget me. I'm in on it, too. Oh, Miss Brooks. Oh, we're cooked. Miss Brooks, I hardly know what to say. Well, I do. First of all, I'm quite flattered to learn that you want a lock of my hair. Secondly, I'm happy to find out why everybody's had me turning around like a whirling dervish all day. Mr. Boynton, you got a lock on my last spin, didn't you? Yes, I did, Miss Brooks. With the lock Walter's given you, you have two. Would you like to try for four? <laughs> Please, Miss Brooks. Go ahead. Take I... some more. I'll just tell people, a funny thing happened to me while I was bending over my mix master. <laughs> of course, if you'll just be patient, I'm sure some fresh returns will be coming in momentarily. <laughs> Watch what I got out. Oh. Hello, Miss Brooks. Well, I, I guess I'll be running along now. Open your fist, Stretch. You're taking all the curl out of my curl. <laughs> She's wise to a Stretch. Just hand it over. Yes, and don't rush off. We should be hearing from another hairy precinct any minute. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Boynton. I'd like to give you this... Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Well, goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Wait a minute, Harriet. Drop it in the collection plate and sit down. <laughs> She knows all about it, Harriet. But how did you find out, Miss Brooks? A little ladybug told me. <laughs> Look, Mr. Boynton, now that you have as much of my hair as I have, I think I'll buy you a family-sized locket in which to carry it. Oh, I didn't want it to carry, Miss Brooks. 
You didn't? Then would you mind explaining, Mr. Boynton? It's rather embarrassing, Miss Brooks, but... Well, you see, I've sewn together this piece of cheesecloth, and I figured if I could stuff it with some real fluffy hair, it'd make a nice pillow for McDougal's head. (laughs) (laughs) McDougal's head? Well, it may help cure his insomnia. I was hoping you wouldn't mind, Miss Brooks. Why should I mind? He's been in my hair long enough. He might as well be on it. (laughs) Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight... Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you K. Dumont's magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable, Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Conklin relented and gave me permission to attend the dance, but not until I had repossessed my missing curls and stuck them back on with some scotch tape. (laughs) At any rate, Mr. Boynton seemed satisfied with my appearance. You look lovely, Miss Brooks. Something tells me we're going to have a, a wonderful time this evening. I hope so, Mr. Boynton. And I must admit that I'm very pleasantly surprised to find that you're not worrying about that frog of yours. Why should I worry about him, Miss Brooks? McDougal's fine. Now, how about this dance? I think they're going to play a waltz. Oh, I'd love it, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> <laughs> On second thought, you two go ahead. I'll cut in later. Brought to you by Common Exposed, your beauty hope, and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Here's good shaving news. Three men out of every four can get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves with Palm Olive Brushless Shaving Cream. This is not just a claim. Here's the proof. 1,297 men tried the Palmolive brushless way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three men out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palmolive brushless yourself. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the proved Palmolive brushless way. This week in Chicago, there's a meeting of great interest to American Housewives, the Golden Jubilee Convention of the National Association of Retail Grocers. It's specially interesting because of the service and convenience rendered to women shoppers by these independent retail grocers in maintaining abundantly stocked shelves of carefully selected quality products so important to our homes. It's through the efforts of these grocers that you get what you want when you want it. The Colgate Palm Olive Peat Company is proud to send greetings to these 10,000 independent retail grocers, your good neighbors and ours. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these stations. Be with us next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Life with Luigi, which follows over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.